For this discussion in sensing and automation, I have two examples of technology that work essentially the same way. In the foreground here is a bicycle speedometer and in the background there is a proximity sensor from an industrial application. This proximity sensor used to be part of a treadmill in which the proximity sensor was used to indicate track speed on a treadmill. The track is a long belt on which you do your steps for walking, jogging or running. In either one of these cases, a rotating wheel, pulley or bicycle wheel, with a magnet attached to it at one point, generates a signal in the sensor. This signal, an electrical pulse, runs along a wire to a display unit or a head unit or a console or a control panel where this electrical signal gets interpreted by the head unit as speed. In this video I'm going to explain how signal is generated in the first place and how this electrical signal turns into a speed reading. Let's get started with the sensor itself. The sensor is fairly inexpensive in this case it's a ten dollar sensor. What you find inside if you cut one open is a coil of wire that's tightly wound out of fine wire. That's it. There are no moving components inside either one of these speed sensors or proximity sensors. This wire coil is made around sometimes air, nothing, so there's nothing in the middle, or sometimes there's an ion core inside to amplify the signal that's being generated. This ion core can be envisioned like a piece of nail, a cylindrical smooth piece of ion inside this wire coil. So there are no moving components inside and these sensors are set to be solid state. They also don't need external power. They generate electricity, they generate an electrical signal that the display or head unit interprets. How is electricity generated with no moving components? This is where some magic comes in. The type of material is important that makes the coil inside. It has to be a conductive material. In different metals, metals are described as more conductive or less conductive depending on how easily they, their electrons can be delocalized. In the crystal lattice, where within each metal, or depending on their type, where electrons are sitting in the corners of the crystal lattices, whatever shape the crystal lattice is, electrons can be delocalized and moved along a piece of wire, moved along the grid of atoms. When electrons are moving, it is voltage and it is current. So, what makes the electrons move? The magnetic field, if it's close enough, or if it's in the proximity of the sensor, if the two of them are close enough, the strength of the magnetic field is able to rip away some of the electrons from an appropriately made material. Platinum and gold are better conductors than aluminum or iron, and so a pro uh, platinum or gold sensor can cost $1,500 just for the sensor itself. Justified in some cases for some industrial applications, for example, is the cargo door shut on a space station? Some such things. So, the passing magnetic field, whether it's passing north or south, it doesn't matter, and whether it's passing clockwise or counterclockwise, it doesn't matter. A passing magnetic field from an appropriate metal is able to rip away some of these electrons and send them on a circuit as current and voltage moving electrons to the head unit. In the head unit, this is a very weak voltage in a cheap sensor like this. In the head unit, it gets processed. This single piece of wire is actually two pieces of wires that come to these two contact points what in this cradle. This cradle is mounted on the handlebar on a bicycle and 
with the contact points on the cradle, the electrical contact is made through these two terminals, which are spring-loaded on the head unit. The spring-loaded capability is important to make solid electrical connections since the signal is so weak. The signal needs, signal needs to be amplified as well, that's why a battery is inside the head unit or in case of a proximity sensor on a treadmill you just plug it into the wall outlet. The sensor is not powered, the head unit or the display needs to be powered to amplify the signal and to do two math operations. This is basically a very very simple calculator that can only do two things. One of the things it can add. Well, what does it add? Well, the, when the signal is coming in through the wire, a voltage peak signal, that makes the calculator to add a predetermined amount again and again. If I go into settings, one of the items that can be set is wheel size. In this case, the wheel size is set to be 2.155 meters. Maybe it's its default settings, it doesn't matter now. There is a predetermined amount. This calculator will add over and over again. It's not going to multiply because it's not known how many times the wheel will finally turn around, but it can add one at a time, one at a time, and one at a time, and can display the result of this repeated addition on the display. So 2.155 plus 2.155 plus 2.155 is, if I exit the menu, is displayed here as distance. I hope this makes sense. It also moves the decimal dot appropriately so the distance is displayed in kilometers, whereas the input number 2.155 is in meters. So it does the, it shifts the decimal dot appropriately as the magnet is being moved in the proximity of I'm just working with glare here in the proximity of the sensor maybe we can do it uh, this way I can hold all of them together there you can see addition is being done now the distance is 0.16 point seventeen point eighteen so that's one function it can add another function that the battery is also powering is that it has a timer inside a stopwatch the stopwatch starts when the signal electrical signal is coming in through the wire from the distance that it calculates and from the time that it keeps it calculates speed. Speed is distance divided by time. So it takes the distance amount, whatever is actually calculated at the moment, and takes the time amount. Whenever a signal is coming in, stopwatch is started. Whenever a signal is not coming in, stopwatch stops. So it takes that time and divides it by the distance travel uh, and divides the distance traveled by this time. So that's how speed is displayed. It's distance divided by time. So when I move the magnet, eventually the stopwatch starts in it. It starts displaying a speed 17 or 5 or depending on how fast I'm moving this magnet, I can move it faster and wow, now I'm doing 43 kilometers an hour. Now I stopped. Eventually the stopwatch will stop inside and wind down. This is my total distance has increased to 0.29 kilometers and now I'm back to speed zero so that's how this works it can add it can divide and it keeps time from these numbers it also calculates trip averages and average speed and other averages with more division so those are the two math fun functions the head unit does adding and division it doesn't ever know if it's even mounted on a wheel all it's capable of doing is adding and dividing. It doesn't know if it's actually on a wheel and it has no clue about whether the input number, the 2.155, is actually correct. You have to ensure that the wheel circumference 
is appropriate to your wheel size and tire size that you're using at whatever tire pressure a tire is being used in a bicycle or speedometer. On the proximity sensor for the treadmill, the circumference is fixed, is not changing, and it doesn't need to be adjusted by the user. Finally, I want to show you some examples here of the same idea. This is called magnetic induction because electricity is induced by the magnetic field force and you can see different variations solid state speed sensor of course it's used in antelope braking and in transmission speed or here is another magnetic proximity sensor the same language and if you look at the fine print as well zero power consumption uh, can be activated by north or south pole it's the same concepts are reflected in the product description over here one more example inductive proximity sensors same idea if you look at the fine details in the descriptions it's the same thing it senses physical uh, closeness of a metal object so lastly i want to show you one more document on the bench here this is uh, the specification from another family of products they are named magnetic pickups and uh, the same language no external power used uh, no maintenance needed impervious to dirt oil water you can see this air gap specified because the signal strength is dependent on this alignment of the magnet in terms of distance this way and in terms of up and down as well in this case they specify five thousandth of an inch which is about a tenth of a millimeter for air gap and you can see different profiles of voltage or electrical signal that's generated by this sensor so depending on how many gear teeth you have a signal can be different in frequency and also in amplitude so the wave can be bigger and spaced more you know further apart or they can be smaller waves or closer together so this uh, sensing and this signal uh, the, the, this uh, signal signature is known and is described this is not something new but it's somewhat magical how signal is generated by just a magnet in a coil of wire and then it becomes speed by the power of addition and division. So that's how these work.